Okay, let's talk about a few examples that you can maybe think about as to whether there will be dim supplies or not. Would a cash allowance be a dim supply? A cash allowance will definitely not be a dim supply because it's basically just an exchange of cash. So there's definitely no transaction taking place in that situation because it is cash in its nature. Therefore, it does not constitute that transaction being a taxable supply because it's just a transfer of cash. Whereas you have like a loan service award and somebody gets rewarded in the form of cash, would that person have VAT consequences to deal with? And again, there would not be any VAT consequences that arise because it's just merely a transfer of money. Now let's look at the same situation of a loan service award being granted to an employee, but in that instance, the actual employee does not get cash, but rather gets a watch, just as we be very aware of like our undergrad knowledge. In that situation, yes, there would likely be taxable, uh, taxable implications so far as the VAT principles are concerned. It would likely give rise to taxable, taxable uh, VAT having to take preference. But we have to remember that there's an exemption for a loan service award that states that for the first 15 years that the employee has actually served, you know, as an employee within his actual company, there is an exemption of 5,000 rands. And thereafter, for every 10 years, that also carries over as well. So that amount of the cash amount would have to be exempted depending on what kind of exemption or exemption that the employee would have qualified for. So let's say that he got a watch which was worth 50,000 rands and the employee worked for the company, let's say for 25 years. So he'd qualify for the first exemption of the 5,000 rands for the first 15 years and thereafter followed by the another exemption of the 10 years, which is another 5,000 rands, which means that in total, we have an exemption of 10,000 rands. So what would then attract a dim supply arising out of that long supply, uh, long service award attracting it to be a dim supply would be the 40,000 rands net of exemption amount that would likely be deemed to be a taxable supply. That is what the logical sequence that you really have to be thinking about as you are thinking about such a situation. What about if you have a low interest rate loan that is granted to an employee? What is that kind of service to an employee? That service is definitely a financial service, which is what? Which is basically an exam supply. So it does not qualify because you're basically making available a financial service, which is an exam supply as previously discussed. What about uh, issue or share incentive scheme that you'd likely be given as an employee in terms of section 8B or section 8C? Again, this is merely just a form of a financial service which is basically an exam supply. As a result, there would not be taxable situations that arise and therefore it's not a dim supply as such. And things like medical aid contributions, your pension fund contributions, do they qualify to be called dim supplies? Again, they would not be called dim supplies because these have their own ways in which in which they're basically not said to be dim supplies. They they are totally not dim supplies. They don't qualify for in terms of the definition of an enterprise if you can bring that argument in as well. How about a bursary scheme? Can you bring that in? Indeed, a bursary scheme is not a taxable supply. Why? Because it's an educational service, which is an exam supply. And again, what do we think about when we talk about the supply of a motor vehicle at less than market value? What is a market uh, motor vehicle in its nature? It's a denied supply in its nature. Therefore, there would not be they would not be uh, taxable situations because you're dealing with a denied supply. However, 
in terms of a motor car being a French benefit, it does have to be a dim supply, but it has its own way in which we have to look at the unique supply that they would have granted to that particular employee or office holder or shareholder or whatever the situation would be because we'd have to give uh, we'd have to basically look into how the actual motor car becomes a thin supply pertaining to particular characteristics that would have obviously been prevalent within that transaction and we'll go into detail about a motor car vehicle uh, been deemed, uh, been said to be a dim supply in an example that we'll follow up with. So it's quite a fine line and, and you can think about holiday accommodation as well. What is a holiday accommodation? That in its nature is a denied supply because it's something that we enjoy so therefore it did not qualify as a dim supply. You know, so that's basically what we have to be thinking about. So the next example that we'd like to touch base on on the whiteboard, we'll likely be looking at a closer look of provisions of a motor vehicle being provided to employees in the form of a fringe benefit.